Hello to one and all of my fellow tarot nerds. Today I am just gonna do a chatty video. I have so many things I want to show you. It's just going to be like a smorgasbord of tarot nerdery. I'm going to talk about a couple of decks that I've been working with lately, a book that I've been reading, and we're just gonna chat and hang out and be tarot nerds together. First, I need my tea. It's mint in a panda cup. First up, a lot of you probably already know this, but just in case you somehow have not yet heard, I have been creating my own tarot deck. It's called The Spacious Tarot. I've been collaborating with Annie Ruget, who is just phenomenally wonderful human being and very talented illustrator. This is what the card backs look like. These are these might come up a little bit blurry on this YouTube video. You probably can't see these super well, but I'm just holding up a couple of the cards. As I'm filming this, it is August 1st. Yeah, August 1st, 2019. We finished our Kickstarter a couple of weeks ago. We are waiting for Kickstarter to get everything finalized and actually get the funds to us. We have finished, it feels weird to say this, but I think we've finished the creative side. We have the guidebook done, we have the illustrations done. And we, my friends, are getting ready to send these to the printer very, very soon. So this has been the thing that has just been my life for the past, mm, well, we've been working on it for almost three years, but doing all the Kickstarter stuff and uh, finishing everything up has been my life really and truly since pretty much May. I closed down my client readings and I've been focusing on the Spacious Tarot for quite a while, but yeah, super exciting. If you backed the deck on Kickstarter, you are golden. I want to thank you again. We were awed at how well the Kickstarter did, and we can't wait to get the decks out to everyone. We will keep you posted. If you missed the Kickstarter, we are going to sell the decks again in the future. At this exact moment, they're not available. If you are watching this in the future, if it is no longer August 2019, maybe it's available. You can go to thespaciousTarot.com and sign up for email updates and we will let you know when the deck is available again to purchase. But I'm so, so, so excited about this deck. It is, uh, it's just so magical and doing this deck has been really a transformational process for me. So that's enough about my deck. Let's talk about some other decks that I've been excited about lately. Transition. Maybe you have noticed I am wearing a t-shirt which features this lovely skull, this beautiful flower crown, and um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a joint, that's a joint. Uh, this is a shirt that is a merchandise from one of my favorite singers, Jenny Lewis, and I say this is a transition because the art for her latest album, which is called On The Line, is tarot inspired. <laughs> So if you follow me on Instagram, I already shared these on my Instagram stories, but I was so, so excited to go to her concert and find that they created this little mini. It's not a 78 card tarot deck. There's just a handful of cards in here, but um, all of the imagery is inspired by the Waitsmith tarot deck. So I'm going to show you again. Hopefully, I don't know how well you'll be able to see these with uh, my camera and YouTube and stuff, but I'll just hold a couple of them up. So it's imagery that's inspired by the Waitsmith Tarot, and then the titles are Jenny Lewis songs. So I said this already on my Instagram, but I was like, I feel like this was created for me because really how big is the intersection in the world of tarot nerds and Jenny Lewis nerds? I am a huge Jenny Lewis fangirl and have been for a long time. So this is just a fun, I just love it. It's like my worlds collided, my Jenny Lewis world and my tarot world. If by chance there is another Jenny Lewis fan out there who's also a tarot nerd, last I checked these were still available on her website. If you have never heard of Jenny Lewis, I will just give her a plug because she's been one of my favorite musicians for a long time and maybe you would like her too, so go listen to Jenny Lewis. Another deck, and this is actually a legit complete in fact, this is more than a 78 card tarot deck. This is the Spolia Tarot created by Jessica Crispin and the artist uh, Jen May, I think is her name. 
and this deck actually has I think 96 cards. This came out quite a while ago. I actually backed this deck on Kickstarter, I want to say it was over a year ago, but I've never really done like a full review or anything of this deck. I have shared it a little bit on my Instagram. The artwork is collage and uh, this, as I've been working with this deck for the past, I don't know, ever since I got it, so maybe a year or so now, it has sort of snuck up on me and become one of my main go-to decks when I'm reading for myself. I still don't really do client readings with this deck because I don't quite feel attuned enough with the imagery to read for someone other than myself but I have found this deck has just a really unique vibe to it. I don't even really know quite how to explain it. it um, you know, one way I would explain at least how the vibe of the Spolia Tarot feels to me is it feels timeless in, in a good way. Some of the imagery reminds me of kind of the roots of tarot in the Renaissance phase in Italy but it doesn't feel stuck in that phase. It also feels really modern. So yeah, I would say it feels really timeless. And just the, the way that this deck gives me messages in readings, it's just been so strong and so on point lately. So um, if anyone's interested, I can do a full review of this at some point, but I just wanted to mention this deck and give it a shout out because it's one I don't think I see enough people talking about. It's a really, really great deck, a really interesting deck, a really unique deck, and I would like to see it reach more people because it's super cool. I really let that steep too long. I'll drink it anyway. There is one more deck I want to show you. This I'm going to keep brief because I do plan to, at some point, post a full review of this one. This is the Luminous Void Tarot. This is one that I've had for a couple of months, and when I first got it, I was kind of perplexed by the deck. I just didn't really feel like I was connecting to it, but I came back to it this week, and I've been giving it another go. I've been doing my daily draws with it this week, and all of a sudden, it's like something clicked, and this deck is speaking to me in different ways. Uh, it's still kind of different. I'm still feeling into it. But I think there will be some people out there who will absolutely love this deck. The things I want to mention about it just really quickly right now, um, I'll hold up I guess a couple of cards so you can kind of get a feel for what the, the imagery looks like. But one thing I wanted to point out is just simply how big these cards are. They are really quite massive. I actually kind of like that because they're not afraid to take up space. They're these big old cards. And then the other thing that I find kind of interesting is the shape. This oval shape is pretty unique for a tarot deck. I believe that the deck creator actually has released a new edition of the deck that is a bit smaller than this edition that I have. And that will be good for a lot of people because these really are kind of a lot to handle. They don't shuffle that easily. But this is just a different this deck is just kind of its own thing. It dances to its own rhythm, so I'll talk more about this deck in the future. Okay, moving on from decks and switching gears just a little bit, I think this is the last thing I have to show and tell today. This is the book Tarot for Troubled Times by Shaheen Miro, hopefully I'm saying his name right, and Teresa Reed. Teresa Reed many of you know as the tarot lady. I am still in the process of reading this book. I'm a little bit less than halfway through, so if it is of interest I can give a more detailed review when I finish reading this book, but you, if you hang out in tarot spaces online you've probably heard of this one. It's been getting a lot of buzz, a lot of positive reception from people in the community, and I do admire that it's doing some things that I think are pretty different for a tarot book. Um, a lot of tarot books are kind of just like, hey, here's how you can learn tarot. And this book goes a little more into, I wouldn't recommend it for someone who's looking to start from scratch with learning tarot. I would recommend it more to someone who already has some kind of familiarity with tarot and wants some perspectives or opinions on how tarot can be useful in your journey of personal growth and shadow work. In what I've read of the book so far, 
the first section of the book, they talk about this metaphor of the fool and how, you know, in the Rider Waite deck and in the in, in older decks and even in decks that are based on the Rider Waite deck, the fool has this knapsack over their shoulder. And so they talk about when you're embarking on any kind of journey of self-discovery, you need to have that metaphorical spiritual knapsack and you need to have tools that can support you and be there for you on that journey. And there's so many tools laid out in this first portion of the book. It kind of dips into a little bit of everything. I did find myself wishing there was space in this book to really go a little bit deeper into some of the, the ideas that they bring up because there's so many interesting ideas that are explored here and um, it does move at a, at a pretty rapid pace but I think it would be really good for someone who is feeling kind of lost and just wants a lot of things to experiment with and see what works for them. Just as a few examples of some of the tools that are mentioned in this book would be things like journaling, energetic cord cutting, um, mindfulness, tapping. So not all of these tools are probably going to vibe with everyone. Like for me, for example, I've tried tapping and it does nothing for me. If it works for you, that's awesome. But I like that this book just kind of gives you a broad variety of things that you can experiment with and sort of take on board the ones that serve you, the ones that you want to keep in your little fool's knapsack. So if this is of interest, I can talk more about this book when I finish reading it. All right, I think those were all of the things I wanted to show and tell about today. The last thing I wanted to let you guys know is I am finally open again for client readings. I have actually been on a hiatus from one-on-one -on -one client sessions basically since like mid-May and it's now the beginning of August so it's been quite a while since I've been offering client readings and that's because as I mentioned earlier I was so focused on the spacious tarot that I didn't have the energetic bandwidth to give to client readings but I've been missing working with you guys. I am looking forward and feeling recharged and ready to pull some cards and also offer mentoring sessions once again, so if you have been interested in working with me, there is a link to my website underneath the video. Thank you for being here. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.